Hi, welcome to the video. In this one, I'm going to show you how I painted my Angron model from start to finish. A quick shout out goes to Fletcher from Fletcher's Painting, who paints for Tabletop Tactics, because that's where I got the idea for the flesh and the skin. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, to start off with, I'm going to paint Bugman's Glow all over the body and the arms and everything. But before I do that, I need to put some airbrush flow improver, just a couple of drops in the cup, and then some airbrush thinner. And because this is not a paint made for airbrushes, so it clogs very easily. So if you put this stuff in, it helps a lot. A lot. You get a big swallop of that on your brush, swirl it round, get it in there, and then I'll test it on the side of the cup, see if it flows freely. Looks good, good to go. Put my finger over the tip, blow some bubbles back into the cup, mix it up, and then start laying it down on the model. So yeah, all the arms, um, the legs, the tail, underneath the tail, uh, head and face, and also I do the uh, like the membrane of the wings in this colour as well, as you'll see in a minute. Hands look, paint that in this colour. Yeah, so I'll paint down the middle of the wings, like the membrane, and I'll leave the uh, bonier parts, whatever they're called, on wings. Once that's done, I'll move on to Vallejo Game Color Terracotta, which is basically a darker version of Bugman's Glow, a little bit more brownie red, and then I'll start painting all the bits we didn't do on the wings. And I also paint the back part of the wing as well, like the, towards the, the tips where the claws are. Also do the tail. On well, the top of the tail I think I did, mainly did with that left more Bugman's glow underneath. Next is Bloody Red by Vallejo Game Air. Don't need to thin this one as much. I do the same as what I did with the first one, Bugman's Glow, but just varying levels. So I put a couple of drops of Flow Improver into the cup and then a varying amount of thinner depending on each paint, some are thicker than others. And with this colour I'm going to paint the front 
three quarters of the wing. And fade it into that darker colour we've got from before. And then uh, I'll let it dry, do the rest and come back and make it even more vibrant by going over it again. I think I did that twice. down the middle of it I also paint the hands in this colour, make them nice and red and then I lightly do it up the arm so it fades into the Bugman's Glow from before so it goes from red to Bugman's Glow a bit of a transition so paint them, get the hands nice and red and then just feather it up the arm And I do the exact same thing with the legs and feet. Paint the feet, make them really vibrant red, and then work it up the leg a little bit. Next I go to Vallejo Game um, Warm Grey. Zenithal highlight just means from above uh, the head so the top parts of the head and face are highlighted by this colour and then I very lightly pull back on the trigger on the airbrush and start doing the muscly parts and the tops of the arms very slowly build that up but if you do make a mistake you can just go back to one of the previous colors and fade that back in and back and forth until you're happy nothing to worry about same again this side very lightly go over the shoulders until you're happy I'm looking for a transition from light around the face and top of the arms and the base of the wings and then it'll go all the way to dark at the extremities like the ends of the wings and the hands and then I just add a little bit more of this warm grey in my cup so I just used it for base coat some of the skulls around the uh, base save a little bit of time later on so you can see I also there I'm just showing you that I did it on the tip of the tail as well the previous color which I didn't show in the recording so next I'm gonna mix terracotta again 50 50 mix with black it could be any black doesn't matter which one and that gives you a really really deep color and then I go and put this towards the back of the wings 
through the back part and and then I come in under, like, at the top part of the membrane just a little bit just do it slowly and lightly and then build it up until you're happy I also use this colour underneath the face, so the reverse of what I did before. Like I add shadow to the bottom of his face. Lightly, very lightly, sprayed on his chin and on the underside of his cheeks. Just making the wings a bit darker again. Bring his armpit <laughs> and also the hands really spray these down so they're nice and dark a really deep red same with the other one and also do that with the feet after See, I'm just spraying the feet now. Bring those toes that he's got either side of the hoof. Make them darker. Doesn't matter if you get it on the hoof because I'll be painting that dark grey anyway. And then I very lightly work that up, up the leg just a little bit to fade into that red from before. Spraying a little bit up his butt and a little bit down the tail on the underneath. And then I do above, so the very base of his back and very lightly on the on the trigger back and feather it down the top of the tail. So we're going for dark into red and then into a lighter colour. And then to help with that transition even further, I've got Vallejo Game Ink Red. You can put this straight in the cup, you don't need thinner or anything, because it's an ink. And then I use this to help blend everything that we've done so far, really. Spray it onto the wings, that makes it really vibrant, it's a really vibrant red. And then bring that into the dark, and then into also onto the lighter parts of the arm, very lightly. On the on the trigger on the airbrush, and just help with those transitions. I'm just spraying it all across the tail, and then a little bit into that lighter colour, just for help that transition. If you're not happy with any of this, you can always go back with another colour. So yeah, you can see we've got dark extremities going to light apart from the tail that's in reverse the reason I did that was because I thought it might look better because I'm gonna have like black claws on the tip of his tail so a bit more contrast next is Brassy Brass by Vallejo Game Air and this is just base coating all the armor plates so the ones on his arms his shoulders his back everything his backpack a whole lot paint painting this color Next is Rune Lord Brass from uh, Citadel Games Workshop, and this is going to be dry brushing. So load up your dry brush. This is a medium dry brush from Army Painter. I do most of it with this brush, and then I use a smaller one in, in between the wings where it's a bit tougher to get to. So load up the brush, brush most of it off onto some paper towel, 
and then go over all of those brass colour armour plates and weapon bits and everything. Really pick out all those raised details. Next is Canoptec Alloy, again from Citadel. It's just a, like a lighter version of what we were just using. A really, really light brass colour. And just do the same thing. I'm just going to go over all those armour plates again and pick out all the raised details. over all the armor plates. Next, once that's done, I'll get Rust Streaks by AK Interactive. This is an enamel weathering kind of wash, really. And just get it straight out of the pot on an old brush, something you don't care about particularly. So I haven't glued the uh, salt shoulder pads on for just for ease, really. You can get to the shoulders and skin better. Just paint this all over. It looks like you're ruining your model, but don't worry, you're not. The beauty of enamel paints is you can use this stuff, mineral spirits. This is a odorless one. Pour some into your cap, well, I do anyway, or a little container. And get an old brush, load it on. Paint it onto where you've put rust streaks, and that'll loosen up all of that rust streaks and make it go really runny, like a wash. And you can just dry your brush on some paper towel, um, and then just use the dryer brush to suck off the pooling. And you can just manipulate it with the mineral spirits as much as you want. That's the beauty of uh, enamel washes and oil washes as well. And not when they're dry, you can still reactivate them with mineral spirits and, and, and manipulate it around until you're happy. Exactly the same, just all over all the weapons, everything that I painted, the armor panels. Don't worry if you get a little bit on the skin or something that you've done, because all it needs is a little bit more mineral spirits and a bit of brushwork for get it off. And you're golden. Or brass in this instance. Okay, then it's model colour, Vallejo model colour, medium sea grey. And this will be painting all the tubing, or cables, whatever they are on Chaos models, we've always got these like knackered cables. So I'm painting them a lighter grey, and then I'm going to wash them with a grey contrast paint later okay this is metal color Vallejo metal color Duraluminium can't really see the name on it because it's quite an old pot and I'm gonna paint all the chains the teeth on the on the axe and everything else that you think should be silver really, should be a light silver. All the little um, studs in his flesh. Not those three on his shoulder though because they are, don't need to do them, the shoulder pad will cover them up. I also paint all the, uh, the wires that are going into his 
brain into the butcher's nails. Just not the thick cables they were in that grey from before. Also there's some rings on his wings where he's had uh, some stylish piercings. The next paint is dark blue grey by Model Colour Vallejo. And with this I'm going to paint all of the tassel bits hanging from his uh, belt and the ones hanging from his shoulder pads too. Also paint his hooves in this uh, colour. hair and the other little tufts of hair that are dotted around his body, some on his back, uh, either side of the wings and uh, off his elbows. Next is metal colour again but this one's burnt iron, Vallejo metal colour. Brilliant uh, range of uh, metallic paints, and this is going to be painted all over the um, axe, like the bits that we haven't done so far. Now we're on to Stonewall Grey by Game Colour, and this is going to paint all of the skulls all over the model, which there have, of which there are many. Alright, this is Basilicanum Grey, which is a contrast paint from Games Workshop. I'm going to use this as intended, so straight out of the out of the bottle, and I'm going to put this over all of those tubes that we did, all of the hair that we painted, the grey hair, and all of the silver silver parts on the model that we did, so the little trims uh, on around the hoof uh, and the hoof itself, all of the chains, the axe. All the silver stuff and grey. Gonna paint the cables around his head and the well, all of the all of them the silver ones and the grey ones. Just let it do its thing. Just doing the chains around his chest there. Just keep loading the brush up nice and thick with this paint, really. Yes, and all the, uh, the tufts of hair. Slap it on there. silver parts on the muscles, remnants of what were once cables in his backpack or something when he was semi-human. This is uh, Neutral Grey by Vallejo Game Colour. It's like a very medium tone grey. 
just going to dry brush all of those hair tufts. As carefully as I can. I'm using a different dry brush for this. This is the medium, I think it's medium, medium Games Workshop brush. Just because it's thinner. Um, like a thinner profile rather than it being round so you can get it in awkward places. Next is Agrax Earthshade. Good old wash from Citadel. You can use any brown wash though I suppose. And I'm just going to put this all over all the skulls. Right, I'm going to next paint the uh, claws and everything. So for that I do black, dark blue grey, neutral grey and then medium sea grey and work my way up. So yeah, I just start with basing them all black. All the nails, the claws and spikes coming out of his wings. And then I just uh, layer them up with those colours as shown before. And then I get some contrast paints. Uh, flesh tear is red and the contrast medium and I do about a, well I'm not sure it's a 50-50 mix, I put some on the palettes as you can see there, wash my brush, get some of the contrast medium. This is for the eyes and I really, really make it thin because it's very very strong pigment to this uh, particular contrast paint so I don't want it to be like no detail showing through and just it being pure red. So I've really thinned it down there as you can see, or just about see. And then I'm just going to let this flow into the eye sockets and, and then around the eyelids very carefully. So it's not quite in focus that, but you can see what I'm, what I'm doing, I'm just very gently the tip touching the around the eye, the eye socket and the eyelids and just let it do its thing. And whilst that's drying I get some more of the Basiliconum Grey and I just put this all inside the mouth and around the teeth, under the tongue, as best you can. Just for make it all dark inside his mouth. And then I come back to the eyes with the Troll Slayer Orange from Citadel. Get some of this on a small brush. And then I'm just going to pick out the, uh, you can't see, it's um, not in focus very well unfortunately, but I'm just picking out the center of the eyes, the eyeballs, with this orange. So it's got like a, a red glow and then an orange eye in the middle of it. And that's pretty much it for the face. One more thing I do, I do, do is uh, I highlighted those little spikes on his face with the warm grey that we used on the skin in the first stage. And then I just paint the tongue with Screamer Pink. Okay, this is the teeth, so we're going to use that Stonewall Grey that I painted the skulls with. And then after I base coated them, I just do a highlight towards the tips with uh, Corax White by Citadel. I also highlighted the tongue and didn't record. It's I just got some more Screamer Pink with a 50-50 mix of white to Screamer Pink and I just did a like a V shape on the tongue for a little highlight on that. Yep, so just base coat them a stone more grey and then just a, a little highlight with the Corax White and done. The face is done. Right, next is Aptalung 502. This is an oil paint and it's um, turquoise. 
and get an old brush for this. Get, get a little bit out on your palette. So this is going to be for the axe and the the wield eater logos on his armor. So just to dab some around the parts that are going to look oxidized and old. Don't have to be neat. Slap it on there, push it in wherever you can. Yeah, so on the shoulder pad. And I also do the little World Eater logo on his on the top of his armor above his head, and there's one on his chest underneath. Yeah, underneath those skulls. So just put some on to start with. Yeah, there's one under there as well. Heidi. Okay, next I get some odorless min mineral spirits, and this is going to I pour some in, I pour some into the cap, so I don't contaminate the whole bottle. Clean my brush off. We'll get another one. I think I did in the end. Load your brush up, and then this will make activate that paint, make it go runny, a bit like a wash, and you just push it around, manipulate it to where you want, and then when it's all liquidy and runny you can dry your brush off on some paper towel and you can just use the dryer brush to suck off the the liquid like that and then just keep doing that back and forth loosen it up push it round it'll go into the recesses but you can manipulate it how you want dry your brush and then just suck off the excess where you don't want it to be. And don't worry if it goes on the rest of your model, you can just use uh, mineral spirits to remove it. Next we got uh, Hext, Hext Lichen by uh, Vallejo Game Air, really thin but very dark purple. And then I'm going to start making the glow effect on the sword. One of the finishing touches now. So I've decided to, to do my sword more of a slanashi color and sort of theme because of the I, I like the lore behind it it's uh, supposed to be a bound slanash demon inside there so I thought rather than painting it larvary color like most people have I thought I'd do a slanash color so that's just gonna tint very very lightly on the trigger and just tint it purple around the the, the base and leave the tip silver same on the other side, but I don't need to use my towel to protect the rest of the model because it's facing away. That's all I did that for. There you go, you get the idea there. Doesn't matter about getting it on the rest of the sword as long as you don't get it on the hand because we're going to paint that in a min once we're all finished. This is uh, Warlord Purple from Vallejo Game Air. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing, but more towards the centre and around those. Well, they're actually little skulls that are uh, look like the bulging out of the sword. So paint that more pinky down the middle and leave the purple around the edges. Again, being delicate with the airbrush is the key here. I'm just using it as an air, like an air, hair dryer there for with no paint, just to try and dry the paint before I go in again. Put a bit more on, make it more vibrant. But you don't want to just slap it straight on and have to redo the whole thing. Same again. Towards the center. And spray the Warlord purple in. To that I get a, uh, a white, this is um, a Vallejo, um, it's not game air, it's a, I'm not sure what it was, but it's just a, a white, and a, an airbrush white, but it's, I, I picked an airbrush one because it's thin, you can use any white and thin it right down with some water, so it'll flow straight, in, straight into all those little recesses on the sword. So then I'm just adding, when my brush goes away I'm just adding more water, and then you can see just it's flowing in, into all the recesses. 
I just do this all down there, that little little pattern part with the with the skulls. Then I get Warlock Purple by Army Painter and do exactly the same thing where we've just painted the white, really make it thin and let it just flow in into where we painted white. So once you've done that front and back on both sides of the sword, we get a, another colour which is Dakala Lilac from Citadel, which is a Slaneshi demon colour. Well, not just only, but they do use it on them. And then I pick out all those little skulls and the little raised details in the middle of the sword. And once that's done, that's the Slaneshi effect done. So then I move on to painting the actual handle of the sword. So I use Rune Lord Brass that we used earlier for the armour and paint up all of the bits that we haven't painted before because of overspray from the purple. Then I get Dual Luminium again, which is that really light silver from metal, co metal colour. And then uh, you can use any silver, light silver, it's just my favourite one. I'm going to dry brush so get it all out of your bristles mostly. And then I'm just going to pick out all the raised edges on the sword and make it look more silver again like it was actually, or is actually, some form of a metal blade with the, that's been tainted by a bound Slanesh demon in the middle of it. Then I'll pick out just the very, so I don't go over the actual effect we've done, just the very, very edges of the sword and make them silver again, and the little pointy bits. As you can see there, very lightly, almost stippling. see that it's getting a little bit more silver on the edges. And then I'm going to highlight the sword handle, so we cannot take alloy that we used before on the armour. And then again dry brush, load with your bristles, get the majority off, and then go over all the bit that we just did handle part and the very back, the tip at the back. And then also with this colour, I'm going to dry brush all of the um, blue oil paint that we did before and pick out all the raised details, all the little teeny tiny skulls in the axe and then the teeth and globes of the world eater logos that we did. And when that's done, that's the model finished and it's just basing I didn't film the basing but if you want to know how I did it it was just uh, PVA glue and basing sand and then I painted it um, doom ball brown dry brushed with Rakarth flesh and then basing um, weathering powder rust weathering powder and then seal that with uh, some clear lacquer and jobs are good anyway yeah that's the end of the video I hope you liked it or got something from it if you're new to the channel, consider liking, subscribing and all that jazz and uh, checking out one of my other videos that I've done. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, guys.